We've got the year in giveaway winners and a Neutric D Pro Dante update coming up next. Yamaha released firmware version 5.6 for CL and QL consoles recently, providing control support for the Neutric D Pro Dante interfaces that we've covered here on the channel. I don't have a CL or QL here to test with, so I sent the D Pro unit off to my good friend Jake. He works at a shop that recently picked up a QL1 after years of owning primarily Soundcraft consoles. They've had very limited real world opportunities to get familiar with the QL1 since buying it. So I really appreciate Jake giving us this real first experience uh, trying to connect a QL1 to the Neutric D Pro. I'm excited to have Jake on the channel. We've done countless jobs together over the years, and I learn something new from him every job I go out on. Uh, stick around to find out who won the giveaways, and uh, please help me welcome to the channel, Jake from Metrotech. Hey guys, this is Jake. I'm here with the Neutrik NA2 IOD Pro that Steve sent over for somebody to take a look at with a QL console, which I happen to have sitting around, unfortunately doing a lot of nothing right now. Um, so I have it set up. The only thing I've done so far with it is plug it into the PoE router to make sure the IP address is all worked out. And I have changed its name to the Yamaha naming structure so it shows up on the console per the instructions that they provide on their website for connecting it to a console. Other than that, we're going to do this together. I haven't gone any further. Uh, it does show up in the software as expected and it shows up in controller as most devices normally do so here we go it's all we're supposed to have to do is come over to the console go into IO setup device mount collect select a device it should appear in the list as a Oh, I probably went by it. Nope. Right up, there it is. It's the Neutrik Pro. I have to give it the same ID number. So I gave it 9. We click OK. It comes in. Oh, it says it's virtual. It should show up as controllable. So that's. Oh, there it is. Alright. Go back to IO device but not controllable. Huh. Well then. It did change over the uh, Dante patching for it. See what happens if I plug something into the device. See if it changes over here. Nope. So it's still showing up as a virtual device. Oh, well, it's no longer virtual there. Alright, sorry about that. It took me longer to figure out than I thought it would, so I'm back. I realized what my mistake was. So when I renamed the uh, D Pro, I didn't unplug it to reboot it, so the name didn't change over here in controller, and it did not become controllable by the console. So we're back to patching it in the console, back in the patch screen, we go to patch, which is the night trick. We make the ID the same. We click OK. Shows up as virtual. Co becomes connected. Oop, wrong screen. We go to I.O. We click on it. There's our device. There's our patching for it. Click on I.O. Oh, declined this time. That's Oh, and that is because I have not repatched my Where 
here. I don't know now. Great. Still declined. I think I've discovered that it's because the software was still running, so it's still looking to control it. So if I close that, the board then reconnects, synchronizes. So now I have the controls that I had in the software. So the downside to that is, is you can't use the software as well to see anything that's happening on the device, but it makes sense because you wouldn't want both of them having control. So that was my issue with the connecting. So that's likely a, my error. I'm not used to the Yamaha console yet. We've got this one just before quarantine started, so I haven't had a lot of experience with it yet. Um, but so that's that issue. So with the software closed, this goes a lot faster. I can go ahead and get into my device mount. I can take it out. I can click OK, it goes away, I can remount it. They say to do it in this section, I haven't yet seen if there's a difference between just grabbing it from the online device section. So if I go there, it's mounted in Dante, I can go into here, go to I.O., it shows up, it's connected, it's controllable. So with the software closed, this goes a lot faster. I was trying to do too many things at one time to see if the software would show the same thing that the board was. Uh, so that was my fault, but, so, if you go into the I.O., it's controllable, you can see that it does what you're expecting, and that is that. See if my patching is still there. Oop, where'd my patching go? Oop, not take patch it. Output patch. So that's my 15. That's correct. Oh, and I have the board set for controller, so it's going to want me to do it over here as it should. And I already have my inputs and my outputs connected there, so that's there. So I'll leave the software for that closed as it just irritates the board. Like, I was able to open it up again. It shows up. It just shows up blank. Um, it doesn't give you any features. So there's that. So now that this is patched, I am guessing I can. So it shows the patching. Of course, it lose, lost my gain when I repatched it, so that's to be expected. I just have a music source plugged in, so I don't need a whole lot. I have it on a link set of channels because it's just a stereo audio from a computer. So if I plug in my left channel into the interface, assuming everything is still playing, it's showing signal, it's playing signal. I have output. Oh, I didn't plug in my outputs. I unplugged them to show the software. So if I plug in my outputs, the music plays in the background, simple as that. And if I plug in the second channel, there you go. So that's how it works. The, it, if I unplug my music, I did set up a phantom powered microphone that I can plug into it. So if I go back into my I.O., click on that, I need phantom because it's microphone. I'll likely need more. So you can see the signal light flashing from the microphone that's plugged in. It's above my I.O. device, but it's flashing there. Give me a second and I will switch over to it. All right, so there is, it flipped over to the microphone, patched to the I.O. Sorry, it took me a minute. I have working around myself, um, but so that's it patched through. Again, it's just a phantom powered mic sitting up there. Sorry about the background noise. I'm just in my warehouse. There's a truck backing up somewhere. So, but, so it works. It's controllable. Uh, again, 
So this should go way down. Comes back. So there we go. All right. I will switch this back to my other microphone. All right. So that's back to this. So that's there. Let's see what happens if I do a S, which I do have. So if I unplug that, this should just be pink noise. So there's pink noise coming out of the speaker next to me. So that's over AES out of the mono on the console. It's just what I had available AES. So that's there. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the board and go back to the software to show some more of the auto plug features that are on this. Um, so I'll be back in a minute. All right. So I'm back to just the software. I dug it off the console. You can see the phantom mic that I have plugged in. I'm not using currently, but plugged in. It's bouncing. Um, so it's got the two line outputs plugged in. There's nothing feeding to them right now. Uh, but if I take that microphone out and then plug my music source back in, which I know I should turn the phantom off. Give me a minute. So turn the phantom off. It's back on my console. There's my music. So it does automatically detect between the line and the AES. So if I were to unplug, as long as there's something plugged into one, it believes that it's getting a analog signal on both channels. If I unplug one and plug into two, it only shows me the AES on channel 2. It doesn't even give me the option for anything on channel 1. Um, so there's that. If I plug in the AES, which should be my pink noise still, you'll see both channels show up. It shows up on the outputs. I can mute them. Pink noise goes away. So there's that so the so it's nice that it auto detects but at the same time it's if I plug a line level into channel like if I plug a microphone or something that I'm expecting it doesn't do anything because it's expecting a yes so I'd be a little concerned on anything where I'm expecting to be able to switch inputs or do anything in the middle of a show um, just because if I accidentally unplug channel one and I'm using channel two, it's going away. Um, so like I said, if I unplug it, it just drops out. There's still music playing on that channel. So it's the same with the uh, outputs. If I unplug output one, they're both being used as line levels. It drops out. There's nothing in that AES. It's still the analog output. So again, the auto, the auto detect feature is nice. I do wouldn't mind seeing somewhere in the software the ability to override that. So I would be able to keep it as two line or two AES. Just so again, if I if I mess something up, I have I don't lose both signals. I've proven in this video that I work around myself a lot. So but I mean, again, it's it's a nice feature, but I see myself screwing it up, not faulting the box for that um, but it's quick it's responsive um, so I will leave it here and I will send this off to Steve and hopefully this gives you guys what you were looking for thanks Thanks again, Jake, for taking the time to set all that up and give us a great idea of some of the important things to pay attention to when connecting the D-Pro to a Yamaha console. I hope we can have Jake back again soon to help with more gear, but for now, let's see who's been chosen at random from all of the entries for this year's year-end giveaway. The winner of the $50 gift card and Sound Nerds Unite care package is Laura Sullenpa. The winner of the $50 gift card and intro to show networking book package is Brian Herpick. 
and the winner of the Neutrik D-Line Dante interface and the copy of John Huntington's Introduction to Show Networking book is Ryan Williams. All three winners will be getting some DC Sound Ops stickers as well. Thanks to everyone who participated and to Neutrik and John Huntington for contributing the interface and those copies of his new book. There's links below to everything and you can order a copy of John's book right now if you don't have one yet. Thanks for following along. Happy New Year. I'll see you real soon.